Hello and welcome to this tutorial about Dynamic Paint and Blender 3D and this is exactly the effect uh, you can achieve using this or a good example but now jump right into Blender and yeah let's start right in first off I'm gonna delete the default cube and L plane and well I'm just gonna scale it up a bit on the x-axis and apply the sky and what well, thing I'm gonna do now is rotate it so the flute or the paint can drip down later um, and now I'm gonna add a shape in this case it's an icosphere you can choose to pretty much every switch shape um, and this shape is kind of gonna paint on the canvas we've just created and I'm just gonna position it and yeah. Now I'm gonna set a little keyframe there and well I'm gonna just set another one on the other side. So on those hands it's now like adjust this animation. Um, as you can see um, it kind of draws on the plane now. But yeah how do we get this effect that's really actually drawing on this plane? The thing you can do, need to do is go to the physics panel. Um, I have my plane selected right now. And yeah, there's dynamic paint. And if you click on it, you have this, this small and rather simple menu. And the plane is gonna be the canvas. And yes, all that is gonna be the brush. Now let's add a canvas on the plane and well I'm not gonna go into detail with these settings right now and also enable dynamic paint for the dot and add a brush. If you press play now you won't see anything and yeah here you can see it uh, the dot doesn't actually paint on our plane and I actually really did this on surface uh, on purpose, because um, when I started using Dynamic Paint, I made this mistake fairly often, and I want to make sure uh, you won't miss it. Go into edit mode, and um, like we only have four vertices. Dynamic Paint is using vertices, and yeah, to work, we need a nice and even grid of vertices to work with Dynamic Paint. So I'm just gonna make a loop cut here, so I have two even faces. Now I'm going to increase the density of vertices. Well, um, yeah, this is. Well, I'm going to increase. Or don't uh, um, overdose it because your mesh will go slow, and a slow computer isn't cool. Um, but yeah, this is how you change the resolution of dynamic paint. And now you can see it does draw perfectly on it. But you have these small artifacts there. I'll quickly show you how to get rid of them. Um, select your plane and go to dynamic paint settings and activate anti aliasing It's not directly gone now, but if we can draw this again, you can see it's got better. If you want to make it even more better, increase the sub steps. I'm not gonna do this now because it slows down your computer, but you can do it if you want to, maybe for your final result. Oh, but now I'm gonna explain uh, some really basic settings you can use to have fun. Um, well, first off, this eraser thing, and I'm gonna explain this to you because if you start using Dynamic Paint, you might want to use it, and it's pretty fun actually. Well, I'm quickly gonna set up some things so you can see what this uh, eraser does, how to use it. Um, now you can see this little sphere there is animated like this. I'm gonna add a, another brush and set it to eraser. Also you can see quite good now you can use multiple objects on one surface. And yeah. Um, however, now I'm gonna delete the sphere. I don't need it anymore. And well, ex now to the color. It's pretty much the thing you expect it to be. You can change the color using it, you can also animate it. I did it in the preview video. Here you have other settings, 
which are um, mostly um, important for the physics because dynamic paint can work with physics for example if you want to smear uh, the paint using wind or stuff um, everything like this it is actually really interesting but uh, self-explanatory I'm not gonna go into detail um, but instead I'm uh, gonna show you now how to do this effect that it's dripping down well we don't care for the, uh, about the output for now but later um, I'm gonna first show you this color thing the initial color of the whole plane like, I'm gonna set it to a light green um, and yeah, it just does have now another initial color um, now to the effects, these are important you have three different ones, first of the spread effect it's just gonna spread and um, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna spread, I don't know what to say else um, I love this effect. Um, however, now the shrink effect, it's like the mesh is gonna shrink into itself. I'm just gonna make this view a bit better, a bit greater, so you can see it better. Um, you can barely see it actually. I'm gonna make it smaller, maybe this will help if you don't cross the border. Well, I guess you can see it better now, but not too good. You can see it's like getting bigger on the other sides. Well, if you increase the speed, you will definitely see it. See, there's this uh, really small line. If you hide your speed, you can see it definitely. Uh, well, this one was actually. Uh, yeah. It's shrinking together. However, we don't want to shrink. We don't want to have this drip effect. And use it, and as you can see, um, instantly, um, it's, yeah, really, um, how do you say this? Um, really even but you have uh, these physics settings and you can play a lot with them and this is great so um, let's just add in a force field to show off how this works um, as you can see it, it instantly gets affected and it's like pushing away the dynamic paint and exactly what you expect you can also have fun using, um, I don't know, yeah, this a little vertex field, a uh, vortex, vortex field. Um, it's gonna shrink this paint around it. However, um, the thing I use and you can also use a bit is turbulence. It also gives it all. Uh, no matter how you use it, it always does give a little randomness. For example, the particle systems also, and every simulation um, can be affected with force fields. Also, dynamic paint, and it's always a good idea to check turbulence. I'm just gonna play around with the settings a bit, and now I really like it. You can really obvious, obviously see it. I'm sorry for my English; it's really bad, actually. Um, I'm not a from my English speaker, it's not my mother tongue. Um, but however, um, I'm gonna set the initial color back to white um, because just uh, yeah, it does look better. Um, well, now to the next step. Um, I'm gonna subdivide it again to increase the resolution for the final render and. Um, I can't seem to plug this into a cache. Oh well, I haven't saved it. Um, but however, there's something I'd like to do before I uh, put it into a cache. Here we have this output thing. And now you click on plus. Now Blender has created the vertex color group, or two vertex color groups, and yeah. Now you can see I can't bake this currently, and the reason why I can't bake this is I didn't save it. So let me quickly save it. As you can see now, there's the option available to bake it, and I'm just quickly gonna bake it. 
Luckily, this is going quite fast. The dynamic paint is uh, quite efficient, actually. Now we have this animation in cache, and that's awesome. So, yeah. Now to the next step. First off, I'm gonna position the camera. I'm just quickly gonna do this by clicking Alt A, Alt G, rotating this by 90 degrees and grabbing it backwards until it fits to the screen. Um, roughly start to um, adjust the resolution of the camera so it fits the whole screen. But yeah, it does fit now, and I'm just quickly move the lamp in position so our plane is lit. And if we press render now, we won't see anything. But ah, uh, yeah, we will see the plane, but it's not textured at all. So yeah, now I'm gonna explain you how to um, render it out. First off, I'm gonna explain it for the Cycles rendering engine. I've created uh, this little window myself, it's a preset. And yeah, I have two 3D moves, the UV editor, a properties window, and the node editor. And yeah, first off, I'm gonna go into shaded with a window, and I'm gonna delete my lamp. I don't need it anymore. Um, I'm gonna create a new material, use notes, and because I want it to be shadeless, I'm gonna apply an emission shader. And now you grab an attribute node, and you have a text field, right? And there you have to write in the names of your maps. First off, I'm gonna show you the web map, it looks like this. And let me just bring up the timeline. And you see, it's animated, and it's there for the parts where it's like still wet, self-explanatory actually. Now I'm just gonna um, get myself a little HDRI image to show off some reflections in a better way. Uh, I guess this is okay. Um, but before I get further, I'm just gonna show you the other map. I'm gonna type in the other name. It's the color map. And you can see it's exactly the image um, we saw in the viewport. Now, about how to combine these two maps and cycles, you just uh, get yourself a diffuse shader, for example, and plug the color map in. You just get yourself a mix shader, glossy shader, and mix them by the amount of the wet map, and it looks like this. And of course, um, some adjustment is needed now. Um, but yeah, do this yourself. I'm not gonna go into detail with this, I'm just gonna show you how to render this using the mission shader again and show you final looks and yeah it's exactly what we want it to be Fun. Um, don't bother about the sphere at the top of the right corner and we will um, care about it later now to the internal rendering engine go to materials and create a new one and go down um, to the options where you see vertex color uh, vertex paint color the options just take here, and I'm just quickly gonna make it shadeless so I don't need a light source and see that image directly. If you render it, you see this. Now we still have the sphere, I said we will care about it now, and yeah, um, we will do this using the outliner. Usually, it's in the upper right corner, uh, otherwise, you can find it there. And yeah, you just have these two options. And this one, uh, the eye does uncheck the viewport and the camera does uncheck how it looks in the rendering. So it does hide it. Well, now we have exactly what we wanted. And we can go further. I will just quickly show you the other effects. You also have the displace effect. It's useful to carve into something. Oh, well, I have to rebake it. Um, carve it to the object. Might as well look like this. Um, really interesting effect, really useful. You have the weight effect, pretty self-explanatory. You can draw weights on objects using dynamic paint. It will look like this. Um, I'm not going to go into detail. And the last one is really useful, it's the waves effect. And it looks like this. Um, I've used it so many times and I'm really glad this is possible in Blender. But yeah, I guess that's it. Um, thanks for your attention. I hope you liked the video. If I was able to help you, you might leave a like or something like this under this video. And I always appreciate critic. So leave a comment or something. And well, 
See you.